What's up guys and welcome to Blair Wiggins Outdoors where we're gonna show you a bunch of different stuff, especially some of my favorite dishes that I love to cook up. We were out filming a show yesterday and the targeted species was this guy right here. It's a pompano and let me tell you, there ain't no better eating fish in my opinion than these guys right here. I'm gonna show you how to clean these guys and cook them up the way I like to do them. And if uh, I like them, I think you're gonna like them too. So check this out. Now the first cut that I like to do on these fish is right up here at the top of the head and make sure you got a good sharp knife. These guys have little tiny scales, but your knife can go all the way through them. Now I make that first initial cut right there and I'll take it all the way to where I can start feeling the backbone just a little bit. Now before I finish this fillet out, what I like to do is turn it over and that way you have the thickness of the other fillet on the other side to hold it up where you can get a really good cut on this side. Now just start your cut basically along the dorsal and I come all the way up to the top of the head at that point. There's meat on this pompano all the way up into here. That's the toro of a tuna really if you're eating, if you like tuna. But anyway, take this one right down to the backbone as well. And with your knife, you can feel just a ta -ta 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 when you start hitting the ribs and the backbone and the vertebrae. <clears throat> so what I do, is just make sure that it's all the way down there. And what I like to do is lift up to where I can see the backbone right there and I can feel, you might be able to hear it hitting it. That's the sound or the feel that I like to get when I know I'm all the way to the backbone. Now with a pompano, what I'll do here is I'll take this knife and I'll just kind of feel my way down to his exit port right here. <laughs> and then I will slice it all the way down the backbone, come out the tail, and you got the fillet coming out. Now with a pompano also, their bones are so soft, you can go right through their rib cage. And their bones are easy to cut out. And you'll see exactly what I'm gonna do as soon as I get this fillet off. Now get that rest of the filet off, and there you have it. Now you see all that gunk in there? You can really trim down and come down the bloodline right here. There's your beautiful pompano filet, and here's one you can work on a little bit and clean up and get the bones out, you'll have a nice filet. I don't know if I like that or not. but. See how you can take those bones out right there. Trash. But look at that piece of meat right there. Most people throw that piece of meat away. Not me. Now, like I told you, the skin here is really, really thin. And if you see, the pompano has very, very small scales. So your knife really goes right through them. And it'll really go through that skin easy. So. When I'm skinning the fish, especially a pompano, I try to keep my blade turned up just a hair, but I keep along the skin. And that also helps me get the blood line out away from the skin. So it's just turned up a little bit. And there you have the skin and a boneless piece of pompano. See all that blood line in there? Come back in there. And you don't have to get it all out because pompano is absolutely delicious. And there we go. There we go. And that's the stomach meat. Most people throw that away because the bones. Now here is the filet that you see in the stores. It's all nice and pretty. Sometimes it's got the skin on. Once again, I like to take the skin off. So hold it at that end. You just start real easy. You know, sometimes with a like a dolphin, you can take and pull that skin away, but when you can cut it off and get the rest of the bloodline that's, that's on the meat away from the skin, that's the way to do it. And there you have a lovely piece of pompano. All right, there's your pompano cleaning lesson for the day. Now we're gonna finish the rest of these. We got about 10 left to do. A couple sheep head in there as well. So then we're gonna head it into the kitchen. I'm gonna show you how to cook these guys up. Time to finish.
All right, guys, we finally made it back inside. I'm gonna show you how I love to cook fish up. This will be the first time I do pompano this way, but uh, got them all bagged up. They're still nice and cold, so we're gonna do them actually, like I say, it's one of my favorite ways to cook fish, but we're gonna do it on cedar planks. I've had the cedar plank soaking in here for about six hours now. I know it says to do it for about 30, but I like to make sure they're good and wet because all that steam coming out of there and that cedar oil in there just gives it really, really great flavor, especially with all this bell peppers. And this right here is cilantro along with basil. And this is Italian parsley. And this here is some good old thyme. Garlic, dill, and this right in here is some beautiful uh, oregano right out of my garden, uh, along with some sage and mint. But we're gonna chop all that stuff up, put it all over the fish, and uh, some of my secret ingredient, which is uh, just very, very good balsamic vinegar. It's really, really thick. It's not like your normal red vinegar, you know, you pour over stuff in it makes you do that kind of stuff. So this is cooking Blair Wiggins style. Here we go. All right, get my Rhineland cuttery knife out and start dicing. So this'll uh, take me a while. Oh, got onions and lime also. So let's start off with something easy. We're gonna do the basil first and then we're just gonna go right down the line, get everything diced up, make it look all pretty when we put it on the fish and then we're gonna go throw it on the grill. So this takes a while. This is what really decorates the top of the fish when you get it done. Um, and I love the different taste of the bell peppers. That's why I like using all three different colors. Or four today. And I do use both a red and a white onion at the same time. Thanks to that Dave Prescott guy again, I got one of these. And his lovely cedar boards. If you look at, now when I pick cedar also, or when I tell Dave to cut me a bunch of cedar, I um, tell him I, I like the red in it because the more red in there, I think there's more oil in there. So it's gonna really, it, it sounds crazy, but the cedar flavor that comes out of this is absolutely incredible. The star of the show. Now, I will pat these guys off and get them dry. But if you've never eaten pompano, I know I've said a lot of times that my, my favorite fish to eat is sheephead, but uh, pompano is absolutely phenomenal. And they only come in a couple of times a year in these other boards out. You want them spaced just right, little areas in here where the oil and the juices can sit. So. Alrighty. First thing that goes on them after you pat them off is the olive oil. Now I got two different types of olive oil I'm gonna try on these since, like I said, it's the first time I've done these pompano. Uh, for this one, I'm gonna do the, this is a blood orange and you can, you can taste it, feels, it kind of tastes like orange peels in there. It just gives it a, you know, a, a citrusy flavor. So I coat one side of it. If you want to get it all even all over the fish. A little salt. And of course it's the pink Himalayan three billion year old salt. Scotch of pepper, and it's rainbow pepper. For no reason. Taylor pepper. And now for the other side, this is, you see that one's about halfway gone already. These things are brand new. This is basil olive oil, like basil. Same thing, make sure you get them coated. A lot of times you get enough on there, all you have to do is flip them and rub them. Especially with the basil, that's some pretty strong olive oil right there. <clears throat> as far as the flavor goes, but it's good. 
All right, now time for the rabbit food. Actually, no, it's time for one side of it is gonna go with my favorite, which is black cherry, and this is the balsamic vinegar I was telling you about. Just a little bit on there. Start dressing. We're gonna go with what we're gonna put down mostly on it, which is the Italian parsley. You don't need all that much of any of this because it is, like I said, it is fresh out of the garden and it is tasty. <clears throat> All right, I'm gonna cover these last few up with some onions. That's the white onion. And I'm probably not gonna use all the red onion. Red onion's pretty strong and you don't wanna, I know there's a lot of seasonings on here with all these different vegetables and spices and whatnot, but once you peel it away and eat the fish, or should I say the star of the show, you don't taste all these vegetables, I mean all these onions and everything. It's, just, it, it's an explosion in your mouth <laughs> of all the different flavors that you get. Like I said, I like to make them pretty, so there's some pretty colored vegetables right there that I really like. And that would be these guys. Few more little flavors of the green stuff from the garden. And I'm gonna say you can't overspice them. You can, but not with fresh vegetables. And my other favorite balsamic vinegar, this is a black currant. And this one really will top the flavor off. It is super thick. And I'll actually put it on afterwards too, when it comes off the grill. But I do like to use quite a bit of this. And a lot of it will run off and cook off on the grill. As long as you get it covered, you can't go wrong with this stuff. There you go. It is ready for the grill. Is that absolutely gorgeous or what? I mean, when you get it looking this pretty, if it doesn't taste good, it still looks good. But uh, I'll guarantee you this is gonna taste good. I don't think you can do pompano bad unless you overcook it. And uh, that's just one thing you wanna make sure you don't do. When these get limp, that pompano is gonna be done. And you know, the reason I like pompano, they only come around a couple times a year. Um, they're kind of bony but they do not have the flesh of any other fish that I've ever cooked. They're in the Jack family, but instead of that meat being red, you see it's white as it can be. Let's go throw it on the grill. Thanks Dave Prescott for a great carrying board. He's the guy that does the flanks once again. Had the grill on high, so I'm gonna turn it down just a scotch. You don't want this wood catching on fire. You just want it to steam. About 20 minutes and it will be done. See you in 20. It's about 18 minutes now and uh, woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. I wish it was smell-o-vision where y'all could smell that. You can really smell that cedar starting to come up. And what I'm gonna do here, um, I got one of the thickest fillets right here. I'm gonna check and see if it flakes. See how that's flaking? And like I say, that's the, ooh, there's some oil in that one. And it flakes off perfect, it went right through. That means this pompano is done. Fourth one's gonna 
set. And four. <laughs> that is absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I cannot wait to eat it. Turn the grill off. God, you can smell that cedar. It, it just, it, it permeates all through that meat and out the vegetables and I'm ready to eat. Whew, that show looks good. Pompano. Very first time I've ever done it on Dave Prescott cedar planks right here. And if y'all do like cooking on cedar planks, you can order as many as you want from him. He will cut them and send them to you. And uh, I highly recommend it because these are like hand-picked cedars. They, he hand-picks these things and uh, they turn out great. We're gonna see how it turns out. One last thing, got fresh limes. Just do a little lime over everything. Gives it a little kick, just a little bit of a, a little bit of a twang, and that ought to be pretty good. So I'm gonna give it a little taste test since I can. See how limp that is? That was done. I don't know if I'll cook it any other way. Y'all ever get a chance to do Pompano, do it. We'll see y'all in the next show. Outstanding.